Hello, this is Adam with CloudAutomation.blog. In this video, I'm going to go over some of the integrations with HPOO or HP Operations Orchestration and ServiceNow. Now, the two main workflows that I've used in the past are Create Change and Create a CI. Now, one of the cool things about ServiceNow is there's no difference as far as the tables between creating a change, an incident, and a request. Yes, yeah, some of the fields may be a little bit different, um, but the majority of them share the same fields. And then just the table name changes within the request. You're going to have the exact same request, the same payload, the JSON payload. Uh, it's still going to be a get or a post. And everything's the same, except you're just going to change that table name. So the two I'm going to, I'm going to drill in on today are creating a change control. So maybe when you're spinning up some infrastructure or making a change to some infrastructure, whether it's public cloud or private cloud. And then the second one I'm going to talk about is creating a CI. So actually going into the CMDB, creating a CI, and then linking the change with the CI. So I have downloaded a content pack from the internet. You can see here under library, if I go library integration, service now changes, you'll see the create change right there. And then under comments, create record. So the create change is actually create the change control. You could delete the change, which you probably really would never want to do. What you'd want to do is update the change, maybe set it from uh, you know new to completed. And then the comments, the create record, that's where we're actually going to create that CI, and then we're going to link them together. Well, the first thing you need to do is actually create the CI, um, and then you can create the change control and link them. So which we're going to get to in just one second. I'm just going to quickly show you how to create a change. So if I just click this and dragged it on, onto my canvas, I'm going to drill into that real quick. Um, you can see here, assign from Snowhost. Now what we did here is if I scroll down to configuration under my project, two things I want to talk about real quick is under system accounts, I have created a ServiceNow system account here. And what this does is this stores the username and password in, a, in as you can see, it mask there. And it stores it there so we don't have to type it in over and over and over again. It's, it's saved there. And then the second thing I want to talk about is under system properties. I've added the ServiceNow host. So I, again, I don't have to type that in over and over and over again for all the workflows we may use that on. So you can see here is my ServiceNow host. If I go back up to my workflow, so you can see here assigned from ServiceNow host. The auth type, I just left it the default value, username, system account, and then I selected username. So you want to select your ServiceNow account that you've just created, select the username. Under password, you're going to select the same account with password. The request body, this is all out of the box. So I didn't have to do anything here. I did add VM name, so I actually added this as an input. So when the user actually spins up this workflow, it will ask for the VM name. And then all of this you can just fill in so you can see the change short description, change description, change number. I left all this blank just to do some testing within the environment. If I jump over real quick to my other workflow and we drill into the create change, what you'll see that I did here is under change short description, I added a little short description, same for the actual long description, the requested by HPOO. So actually I created a user within ServiceNow called HPOO and I can identify which change controls have been spawned from HP operations orchestration. Same thing with change category, you can see I put hardware there. The configuration item, so you can see it assigned from variable virtual machine name. If I go back to this previous workflow item and I drill into that, this is where it's actually creating that CI. So you can, again, you can see that host, the ServiceNow host, the username and password are the exact same configurations, but the table name is what we're actually creating something new in. So you can see the table name here, cmdb underscore CI. Then if I scroll down a little bit, we can look at the body. And this is that JSON payload. So you can see the name is VM name, the manufacturer, is it virtual machine, the install status. If you look at the ServiceNow REST API guide, you can get all the information that each table has, all the different fields that CMDBCI has, that change has, that request has, that incident has. Just for the demo, for this demo purpose, I only use these four fields. Um, just to make sure they would create the change and then I can link them. So what does this actually look like in action? Let's click debug here. Let's click play. And it's asking me for that virtual machine name. I'm going to use the server name test YouTube server one. I'm going to click continue. It's going to go out and do that create record step. You can see the rest call here. It's going to then create the change and do the rest call here. And it looks like it was successful. Let's jump over to service now and see how that looks. So I just jumped into service. Now let me do a refresh on this. We should see a new change record. There you go. So you can see 30,010. Let me drill into that and we should see that CI as the CI that we created. There you go. So you can see test YouTube server one. 
I can actually look at some very basic information if I click that. So you can see here the name, I can, you know, the asset tag, the category, the status is installed. And you can see here automated change for VM creation from HPO for VM test YouTube server one. Again, all of these fields that can be updated automatically through that JSON payload. Just look up the ServiceNow REST API guide. And you do have to do some digging for all the different tables and the specific fields that you want to fill out. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. If you have any requests, again, feel free to reach out to me. Have a great day.